All right, so in this video, we want to teach you the correct way or the do's and don'ts of mixing your epoxy. We have a couple different ways that we want to show you that will allow you to make sure that your epoxy is mixed perfect every time. Number one, you want to make sure that your room temperature is about 70 to 80 degrees with under about 40% humidity. So a really cool thing to get is one of these little uh, humidity uh, thermo pros. It'll tell you your humidity and your temperature of the room. So this is really useful. We will link this in the description below if you'd like to go ahead and purchase one of these. All right, so I wanna show you two different ways to warming your epoxy. One is using a warm water bath. You can do this with a bottle warmer, warming up water in a microwave, and just placing your resin inside of it, placing bottles inside of it, that will allow you to warm up your epoxy. The next method is using a heat gun. So basically, if you pour your part A into your cup, you could then slowly use a heat gun to warm your epoxy. So let's go ahead and mix up some epoxy and show you the process. For artistry epoxy, all of ours is done by volume. That would be 10 milliliters of A and 10 milliliters of B equaling the same volume. Certain epoxies are by weight. That would give a different ratio. With artistry, the resin weighs more than the hardener. So you would have your ratio off if you were doing it by weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some epoxy in here. And then I am going to put this in my warm water bath. So we wanna see that epoxy temperature basically be about 80 degrees. That will make it thin enough for when you're mixing. When you mix nice and slow, it has a thinner viscosity and it allows you to have literally zero bubbles. All right, so while that's getting up to temperature, let's go ahead and discuss why we mix in two cups. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna start mixing in the first cup, and then when we're done mixing that, we're gonna move it to a second cup that's clean, that doesn't have anything in it. So first off, let's go ahead and pour our part B to half ounce. And then once our epoxy is up to temperature, we're gonna pour that into our part B. We're gonna make sure that part B is in first. It's a thinner viscosity, so it's gonna not leave a lot of the residuals on the outside of your mixing container. So we got our uh, epoxy to about 80 degrees. That way, now we can start pouring our side A into our mixing cup. So again, we're gonna be by volume. So I just did a half ounce of B and I'm gonna fill to my one ounce line of A. So another pro tip is if you see your cups a little tacky, you can add a little bit more A to your mix ratio so that you're a 1% more of A than you do B. So you can always do that. Just a tiny bit over your basically my one ounce of A. All right, so the best way that I have found to mix is slow and in like a circular eight pattern. So I just kind of go nice and slow in a uh, kind of like an infinity eight. So you're gonna see that it's a little cloudy. And as we mix, that cloudiness is going to turn to clear. So this process takes about two minutes to basically get to that clear point. About after two minutes, you're gonna see where your epoxy gets clear, like so. Now what we wanna do is we wanna take our mixed A and B that we poured into one cup, and we're gonna pour it to a clean cup so this doesn't have anything in it, and we're gonna basically scrape all the edges and get all your epoxy out of here. We then want to mix for an additional about 30 seconds. All you're doing is trying to make sure that anything that was not mixed is mixed really good. So the reason why you want to mix into two cups is because 
you're gonna have some excess on the very edges that stay sticky. If you are about done with your cups and you wanna get a little more and you're wringing your fingers around it, rubbing it on your cup, you're basically putting unmixed epoxy onto those cups and those could stay tacky. So pouring from one cup to the second cup, make sure that you have a perfectly mixed epoxy every time. Later on in this video, we will show you the results of why you would want to do that. So stay tuned for that. All right, so now that I have mixed for about another 30 seconds, our epoxy is perfectly good to use. I'm gonna show you, well, I'm just pouring it into some molds of how clear our epoxy is when mixed properly. So once you put your epoxy in your mold, you can go ahead and use a heat gun to make sure to get all your bubbles out. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna show you what happens when you mix cold epoxy. So what we've gone ahead and simulated is in winter or a little cold, you can basically, we put our epoxy in the refrigerator to get it kind of cold. All right, so basically we have our um, part B at 65 degrees. Now we've got our part A also at 65 degrees. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pour them. We're gonna basically mix up our epoxy like normal. So I'm gonna pour my part B into half ounce. And get that perfect. All right, so that's my part B at half ounce, my cold part B at half ounce. And now I'm gonna take my cold A, look how thick this is because it's a little colder. I'm also, I'm gonna fill that up to an ounce. All right, so how not to mix epoxy? Just take that and stir it quick. What you're doing when you do that is you are introducing micro bubbles to the epoxy you're not gonna be able to get those out and you're gonna have a micro bubbly project. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these into molds and you will see why you don't wanna do this. So I'm just gonna mix. Another thing that you'll see is that the epoxy almost turns white. So sometimes they're like, uh, you know, we see some problems, some technical support problems that are like, I mixed my epoxy and it turned white. Well, it's not whipped cream. We don't wanna whip it. We just wanna mix it slowly to not introduce more bubbles. So I'm just gonna do like a crazy mix for it. So as I mix that pretty crazy, see how that is kind of white and not, and has a ton of bubbles in it. So that's what we don't want. So let's go ahead and pour this into a mold and then we'll come back and see how it reacts. I wanna go over a how to mix. And what we've done is we've gone ahead and made a little user guide here. We also have some eBooks on our website, artistryepoxy.com. We have a how to mix guide that will help you walk you through these steps as well. So go ahead and grab those. All right, so we have some bullet points back here for you. And basically what we wanna do is have your room temperature at about 70 to 80 degrees. And you want your humidity level to be under 40%. We are here in Texas and it's high humidity outside, we basically just have a temperature controlled room that we like to deal with the weather and it does, our epoxy does really well. You want a warm resin A, and we would discuss two different ways of doing that, a warm water bath or a heat gun. Once you go to mix, we're gonna mix in one cup first, pour part B in, then part A. You can always go a little tiny bit more A, like we discussed and then mix slow. Mix for about one to two minutes until that cloudiness turns clear. Once you have that epoxy that have turned clear, go ahead and take it from one container and pour it to your second container. The second container trick will allow you to make sure that your epoxy is fully 100% mixed correctly. Once you've done those processes, basically you're ready to work on your epoxy project. So put it on your cup, put it in your molds, do some really cool projects. All right, so now that we've done and mixed our epoxy, We've poured those into some molds. We're gonna come back a little later and see how they did. 
So we have let the epoxy cure that we did our tests. So today we are going to show you um, the differences of why we mix in two cups and then also what the difference is of a warmed epoxy to a cold epoxy. So let's start by the two cups. So um, if I take my uh, cup and just kind of crack out the uh, mixed epoxy, All right, so that's that one. So then I'm gonna get this one out. I can already tell this one was the sticky one. All right, so here is the one that we mixed in one cup. It is sticking to the glove. That's unmixed residue that stays in the outside of the cup. Um, I can kind of, it's pretty tacky inside of there. This is the one that did not get, uh, the one that we mixed in two cups. So we put it in that one. It won't stay at all. It's not sticky. So this is why you would do pouring, once you mix it in one cup, pour it into a second cup. That makes sure that you do not have any unmixed epoxy at all. I know when you guys like to do projects, you guys don't like to waste epoxy. So what you do is, let's say you just mix in a one cup and don't, when you're done with the two minutes, pour into a second cup and mix for another 30 seconds. You take your finger and you scrape the edges and you put it on whatever you're doing. Well, you're making sticky on the outside. Again, not sticky at all. Like I can't do anything. That one's sticky. So. That would be the point of why you would do mixing in two cups. So on to warmed epoxy versus cold epoxy. So let's show the cold epoxy first. So as we were mixing, we mixed fast. We mixed with, you know, pretty cold epoxy. Um, this is what you get. You get um, lots and lots of bubbles. And that. So it's cloudy, it's lots of bubbles. We do the other one where we warm the epoxy and we did it correctly. And this is our epoxy that is literally like crystal clear. So those are kind of what we're getting there. Also notice that this is a pretty thin layer. This is super hard. Epoxy that is bendable once cured. This is going on two days now. We poured it Friday night and it's Monday morning. So we're going on two days of cure and I can't bend this. Um, even the one that's cold is not bent. So getting yourself a good epoxy as well, making sure that you have the correct epoxy for your correct projects is also really important. Another tip would basically to be use a space heater close by to your projects, making sure that you have your temperature for your projects as a good curing temperature. All right, so basically with these tips that we've given you, I think that you guys can take any epoxy project and have a perfect result. So if you wanna learn more tips, tricks, maybe cool projects, make sure you like and subscribe our video and stay tuned for another one. Thank you.